I'm here with uh, Sheikh Mujahid. Sheikh Mujahid Abdul Kareem is the founder of the Masjid Rasul, uh, which uh, started back in 1980, and uh, it is the first black Shia mosque in the Watts area of Los Angeles. Um, and he has been a great campaigner for peace. He has been a great campaigner for tolerance. He's been a great campaigner for interfaith dialogue. And uh, we're going to be talking him to him today. He is most notable for uh, establishing a truce between two big rival gangs of Los Angeles, uh, known as the Cribs and the Bloods. And those gangs actually started in the Watts area of Los Angeles. Uh, they were responsible for a lot of bloodshed that went on. And then those gangs uh, later uh, 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 basically spread to all other cities of the United States. So uh, Sheikh is uh, the guy who started that truce and also brought a lot of the key gang members to, uh, to true Islam. And uh, we are very grateful and honored to have him here with, with us today. And uh, so, Sheikh, without further ado, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you did all this and what brought you closer to Islam in the first place? Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, in the name of Allah, God, most gracious, most merciful. Uh, my name is Imam Mujahid Abdul Karim. I'm the Imam Juma prayer leader of Masjid Ar Rasul in Los Angeles, in the poor area of, of, of Watts, California. Uh, this is one of the most depressed, oppressed uh, communities in America. And alhamdulillah, uh, I began working there in 1980. The primary mission was to get a masjid in the most deprived area. And in, th in this particular area, we have two major gangs called the Bloods and the Crips. Uh, they were warring with each other for more than 20 years. Uh, Watts, uh, in the community, was known as, they used to call it like Little uh, Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon, because of the uh, fratricide in that particular community. There were hundreds of killings and, and stabbings and, uh, in, in, the, in the Watch community. And alhamdulillah, you know, Allah, he, he blessed me to get them organized in 19, 92. It took me 14 years, from 1978 to 1992, to get them uh, organized. And it was a very, very difficult task. But uh, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me to get them organized. And uh, for the first two days, uh, or three days, in Los Angeles, there was no killing between the gangs in Los Angeles. And uh, they put the truce together, uh, and the truce it's still holding, not like we would like it to be, but it is still holding in the Watts community, and not only in the Watts community, but all over the Los Angeles area. And it spread it all across America, and all the major cities in America, New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, Minnesota, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, New Jersey. And alhamdulillah, you know, we, we're thankful to Allah for helping us to get this this truce organized because this was a major issue in the black community was the, the, the violence, the, the criminal activities of the drugs. But uh, now uh, many of the young guys have become, that were former gang leaders, have become Muslim. Some became Sunni Muslim and some became Shia Muslim. And I'm, I'm thankful to Allah that uh, he affected their heart because uh, this is the critical area if, if the youth come together, then they would have a big impact upon the black masses in America. Uh, most of the black leaders think that whatever should affect uh, the Los Angeles area will have an impact upon the black people in America. And we have to recognize that it's over 50 million black people in America. And these young people, uh, you know, could uh, be a very, very important instrument and getting the black youth and the black people mobilized because when they move, seemed like the whole black society moved. Uh, this truce was so powerful that uh, Denzel Washington, uh, the one who played uh, Malcolm X, uh, he came to Watts and uh, gave much respect to the truce and he's working with the young brothers from the Watts community. 
Uh, we had Danny Glover, who was a very famous actor that uh, supported the truth. We have uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey. When the truth happened, she invited uh, two of the brothers that helped me to get it organized to come to her uh, TV program and to uh, let the world know how this truth uh, happened. So it, it went worldwide, actually, not only for America, but it went different parts of the world. Chek, I, uh, I want to slow down. You said quite a number of things, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to ask you some questions about that, just for our viewers who may not understand the significance of the Watts area. That's the number one thing, and I have actually three questions within your narration. The number two thing, alcohol, and how true Islam has helped cleanse these people. And uh, I would like to actually make a comment about that, and that comment is basically to our viewers that uh, one thing that, you know, a lot of times uh, uh, progressive liberals say, you know, well, it's your right to, to, to take a drink if you want to. Well, clearly it is, but uh, the, the communities, uh, the black communities, even the Indian community, in, in uh, I mean Native Indians, uh, and if you look at the Eskimos in Alaska, uh, about 50% of them are alcoholics. So they carry the alcoholic gene and drugs and alcohol affect them much more adversely than they affect the white Europeans and that's just a genetic fact. And uh, uh, the, the Europeans have been used to alcohol and they've uh, kind of uh, uh, weeded this gene out over centuries. but. Uh, other other communities carry these genes, and uh, for them to even go near uh, such things is uh, is you know leading to violence. So, Sheikh, I'd like to talk you to talk about these two things in a little bit more detail. For, uh, one is the importance of what's, and uh, the other is the uh, the role of drugs and alcohol to create killing and create violence and destroy homes. So, please uh, say a couple of words on how Islam helped them. Most of the black leaders, uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, they look at Los Angeles as, as, as the cornerstone of the movement in America for the uh, oppressed black people. Um, we look at also the situation of drugs in the community, liquor in the community. We know this is a plan uh, like, for instance, uh, the British, how they put so many drugs in China, the opium war, uh, you know. And so we know that these drugs are not brought in by the uh, in oppressed people. They're brought in by an outside force in order to uh, keep the people's mind away from the real issues. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a very difficult uh, thing to try to overcome. Uh, because a lot of these young people are unemployed, uh, they're not educated, a lot of them have prison records, and in America if you have a, a felony, no one wants to give you a job. So uh, sometimes the young people turn to these drugs out of necessity to sell them. But I, 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 I think that uh, the truth had a great impact upon the black community of Watts in particular, and, and a lot of the young people, they stopped selling drugs, and they became more politically aware and more religiously aware. Um, we look at the movement of the Holy Prophet of Allah, may Allah, the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. We look at, at his situation when he migrated from Mecca to Medina. I mean, who did he organize? I mean, there was two big tribes in Medina at that time the Al Aws and the Al Khazraj tribes, and they became later known as the uh, Ansars, the helpers uh, of Islam. So I tried to use the strategy that the Holy Prophet of Allah used in organizing these, the young people, um, and, and, and God willing that they will be a very great asset uh, for the Islamic movement because uh, some of the young guys that uh, helped put the truth together uh, they stop gang banging, they stop killing, they stop selling drugs, and uh, they have become more spiritually aware. Okay, that's, uh, that's the, especially in the black community, the message of Bilal, the best message of Ghulam John, the message of Karbala and Hussainian, 
and the stand against the black people. Tell us a little bit about that and how that resonates within the black movement and the black community in general. Well, I read a book. I, I, I was a Sunni Muslim for a couple of years when I became, uh, you know, accepted Islam. And I read a book called Hussein, the Savior of Islam. And I read that book, uh, how his family were treated at Karbala. And uh, so, to me, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was very easy to me to, to recognize their plight and their struggles because this is the same thing that happened to the uh, black people in America, how my people were bought on slave ships. And uh, we were forced to, really, we built the economy of America. We made it the superpower that they called themselves, that they called themselves uh, the superpowers of the world. So we built the, uh, the financial structure for them. They, we, they forced us to work for over 350 years, over five million black slaves. So uh, we, 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 we see in America that black people in particular, uh, they, they, they are very forgiving people, but they haven't forgotten you know, the, the, our situation in America, how we are the most oppressed people outside of the indigenous Indians, we are the most oppressed people on the planet Earth. Uh, that's, uh, that's wonderful that you, you realize that and the message of Hussainiyat res resonates very well, especially within the black movement and I think uh, personally that the, the black Muslims are the true indigenous voice of uh, Muslims uh, worldwide within the United States and um, uh, the purpose of doing these uh, talks is to make the rest of the world's Muslims aware about this. So I would like to ask you, Sheikh, what, what you think is, are the biggest challenges facing the Muslims worldwide and especially with reference to the Shia Muslims? Um, we look at this situation in the Islamic Republic of Iran. America have trade embargoes against them. Uh, we look at the situation that's happening in Afghanistan, uh, even with the drone attacks against our beloved country in Pakistan. And we see that the, the, the biggest problem that the Muslim have is, 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 is the unity. You know, how the atrocities that's taken place in, in Pakistan. You know, even in Serbia, during the genocide there, it's been more uh, Pakistanis killed than during the, during the oppression of the, in Serbia. So, and we got to stand by our brothers and sisters in Pakistan that's being massacred by these so-called uh, Muslims that uh, uh, follow, I don't know what they're following, what ideology they're following, but they're not really practicing real Islam because nobody, with a sane person with an intelligent mind would put a, strap a bomb to themselves and go into a masjid and blow up the innocent men, women, and children. Islam totally prohibits that. So, but I think more could be done if we could get the support in, uh, as African American Shia Muslims because we have the impact upon the black people in America. 50 million black people in America. As, as Muslims, out of these 50 million black people, there are approximately maybe five to six million that are African American Muslims. Every black family in America have a Muslim in that family. And, and we can organize them. We can organize multi millions of black people. To, to demonstrate against the injustices that's being committed against the Muslims around the world, but we need support. You know, even in America is a big country, and uh, we have only one Shia mosque in, a, in America, in the black community. There are many Shia mosques, but they're not in the black community. We have only one that's being operated by African American Shia Muslim, and that's our masjid in Los Angeles. Also, we just pur purchased uh, land in Houston, Texas, where we, we are building a mass year there. You know, Houston is the fourth largest city in America. Our intention is to open up mass years in all the major cities. Uh, when we finish Houston, we want to open up one in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C. And these, these are key areas because whatever should affect these particular areas, will it have an impact upon the total black population of America. Inshallah, we wish you all the success. I think at that note we are going to keep this uh, discussion short and we will keep talking to you. Uh, we will also uh, add to this uh, uh, clip 
uh, a link to uh, uh, Sheikh's website where uh, people can donate to his uh, building in Houston and his further plans in uh, uh, New Jersey and uh, Chicago. So, inshallah, we'll keep talking. Thank you very much.